Welcome to Rocksteady Studios and episode two of Arkham Insider. Last time we flirted with the all new feature, dual play. But this time we're gonna take you on a dual play buffet. And for dessert, we're taking video questions from an Arkham super fan. We are back on the world's most comfortable couch, and I'm joined here by Tim Hannigan, the lead AI programmer at Rocksteady Studios. Tim, how are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. How are you? Good. It's been a tough project, it right? It has been a tough project, but we're nearly there. to the end. I can smell it. Smell the finish line. <laughs> it's just around the corner. Now, we showed a little bit of dual play in the All Who Follow You trailer. I promised everyone an all-you-can-eat smorgasbord of dual play. And I'm hoping you're the chef who can take us there. Yeah, I shall do my best, thanks. <laughs> Talk us through where we're at and what we're doing. So uh, what we're seeing here is Batman and Nightwing. They're going to team up. They've been tracking down Penguin. Mm -hmm. He's got these weapon caches throughout the city. So okay. he's, he's got these locations. He's hiding weapons. He's stockpiling weapons. He's right. kind of supplying the weaponry to the other people in, in Gotham City. Okay. And you and Nightwing have teamed up to try and track him down. So you as Batman are going to try and infiltrate yeah. and uh, join up with Nightwing inside the cache to take out the enemy. And we make a classic Batman entry straight through the ceiling straight and then the seamlessly ceiling. straight into combat. As always, straight into combat. So obviously the big goal with our combat system is always to go straight into yeah. combat and to be seamless once you're there. And then talk us through what happens from here in the context of dual play. So from here, you're both fighting at the same time. The AI is taking control of the character you are not controlling. Cool. Now at any point, as, as Batman, for example, you can switch to Nightwing, yeah. and the AI will switch to take control of the other character. Uh, if you're building your combo with Batman, and you, you see that there's an enemy over by Nightwing you want to take out, yeah. and you can switch to Nightwing, you'll keep your combo. If you've got your special charged up, you can instantly use your super combo takedown on that thug. Super combo take, and that's these sort of epic takedown moments where both characters team up for a complete KO on that thug. Yeah, if you build up your, your takedown meter by hitting the thugs, then it, when you've got enough uh, charged up, you can execute that true play takedown. And then what about other features that we've seen previously in, in free flow combat? We've got uh, weapons that you can pick up off the ground, we've got double and triple takedowns. So dual play sort of sits on top of all those pre-existing systems. Yeah. Well, all those systems integrate together, yeah. yeah. So there's, there's, no, there's no separate system involved. It's all kind of trying to flow together seamlessly is always the goal of free flow combat. Now you've been at Rocksteady from day one, so the combat that uh, everyone saw in Batman Arkham Asylum, this came out of your brainium. Uh, yeah, I guess you could say that. <laughs> I mean, obviously everything's a collaborative effort, so sure. uh, you know, working heavily with Sefton, working heavily with everyone on the team who's got input into you know, how they want the game to progress yeah, and how they want the combat to feel. So. And how does it feel for you having sort of been there uh, and, and been so critical in the creation of this, now it seems like such an expansive uh, new combat system that uh, it's incredible to think of where it came from and now where it's gone to. Yeah, I mean, it is pretty incredible to, to see where it's come to from, from those beginnings back on Arkham Asylum. I mean, I remember the prototype days yeah. and it was, uh, it was 2D combat. It was, <laughs> it was all sorts of different things in the early days, but now, you know, to see where it's come. And, and it's all because, you know, because of the input we've had from the team and, yeah. and the ideas we've had and the ways we've been able to progress it. Uh, due to the success of the previous games, it really allowed us to, to push it yeah. for this final. So Batman and Nightwing completely clearing house. It's an epic looking fight. The number of enemies that we've got in combat just seems to be almost out of control. We've definitely had to up the count this time to account for the fact that there's two heroes in the room. Makes perfect sense. Tim, I think dual play is going to be one of those features that people go crazy for when they get their hands on Batman Arkham Knight. You have done an awesome job with this, but I know you're busy. You've got to get back to it, right? I do indeed. Thanks for your time. No problem. Tim Hannigan. Hey, what's up you guys, it's Caboose XBL. You know that I've been covering Batman Arkham Knight on my channel for over a year now, and with two months to go, I've got some questions to ask. It seems Scarecrow has gotten Gotham City to evacuate in Batman Arkham Knight. What will be going on in the city to make it still feel filled with stuff to do 24-7? The streets of Gotham City are jam-packed with action. We've developed an emergent rioting system which sees all of the thugs of various factions ripping up the streets of Gotham, and Batman can get involved in that anytime he wants. On top of that, we've got the military forces loyal to the Arkham Knight. They are spreading their presence throughout the streets as the game progresses. We're talking tanks, we're talking mobile infantry, we're talking airborne drones. There's also members of the emergency services in peril and they need Batman's help. And then on top of all of that, we've got the Riddler with his ever-present threat. 
We all know the Joker is dead, but in the Arkham Knight prequel comics, it seems that he's left a permanent scar on Batman. Will we see elements of that within the Batman Arkham Knight story? The death of the Joker at the end of Batman Arkham City had a massive impact on Batman and the entirety of Gotham City. The chaos that Joker represented is no longer there, and that has allowed the Scarecrow to unify all of the forces of the rogues gallery, and that spells bad news for the Dark Knight. Besides the Batmobile, of course, what would you say was the most fun and most challenging new feature to create in Batman Arkham Knight? Building out the entirety of Gotham City in immense detail, I think, has probably been the biggest technical and creative challenge for everybody here at Rocksteady. Seeing the Gotham City that we've built come to life has been incredibly fun and so satisfying. But for me personally, I think the dual play features in the game are absolutely incredible. Teaming up with Catwoman for a dual play takedown, nothing beats that. It seems the Riddler is at it again in Batman Arkham Knight. One thing we all love to hate are those challenging puzzles to get the Riddler trophies. How hard are they this time around? If it's bright green and it's got a flashing question mark above it, you can bet your Batarang it's gonna be tough. The Riddler's back and he is challenging Batman like he never has before. As a team, we have challenged ourselves to come up with some of the toughest riddles we can possibly think of. But we're not sending you out alone. The Riddler informants are also back, but this time it ain't gonna be so easy to squeeze that precious intel out of them. Thank you so much for answering all the questions, and if you want to know where to find me, just search Caboose XBL on YouTube or shine that bat signal up in the sky. See you guys later. If you've got any questions for us at Rocksteady, send them in and we'll answer as many of them as we can. That's it for this episode of Arkham Insider. We'll see you next time. And don't forget, be the Batman.